Shalom, holy brothers and sisters. This week's Parsha is Parshat Vayishlach. Vayishlach means, and he sent. We're, we are continuing the sibling rivalry story of Jacob and Esau. At this point, Jacob has already been living with his uncle Lavan for over 20 years, and his brother Esau still hasn't forgiven him and still wants to kill him. And Jacob really just wants to make amends with his brother. And we learn a lot of lessons in this week's Bible portion about the importance of making peace between people, between friends, between siblings, and all of the things that are necessary to go into peacemaking. One of the quotes, um, it comes from Genesis 32, chapter 32, verse 5. It says, Vaitzav otam lemor. It's talking about Jacob is commanding his messengers. He wants to send messengers to convey a message to his brother Esau because he knows that Esau is still mad as ever, even though over 20 years have passed. Ko tamrun adoni. This is what you should say to my master, Esau, to Esau. Ko amar avdecha Yaakov. So said Jacob, your servant. Im Lavan Garti, I lived with Lavan, their uncle, Vachar Adata, and I have been delayed until now, meaning I've been preoccupied with Lavan. You know, he he had to work for 14 years in order to marry his wives, um, Leah and Rachel. And I'm sorry, like I've been busy. So he was trying to like send a message of communication, but as we know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. He didn't say to his brother, listen, you're evil and I'm wicked, therefore I deserve the birthright and you got what you deserved, you didn't want it anyway, none of that. He was trying to appease his brother and he was trying to put him on a pedestal and lower himself by, by calling him, referring to him as my master and referring to himself as his brother's servant. So we learn a lesson from, from here that when you're dealing with a person, especially somebody who is um, an egomaniac, who has a lot of pride and who is difficult to deal with, that the, the characteristic of humility is really important. And in order to achieve peace, it's okay to, to kind of like give them what they need to hear in order to have peace. But not only does he do that, he also sends Esau, his brother, lots of gifts. He really just like humbles himself before his brother. So we learn from here that it doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. You, It's better to lose an argument than to lose a friend or to lose a family member. And we really need to do whatever it is necessary to repair relationships and not um, make them worse or continue you know, um, disagreements or arguments. Another thing is that there is a lesson in the word garti. Um, in Hebrew, each Hebrew letter has a numerical value. For example, if we were dealing with the ABC, A would be 1, B would be 2, C would be 3, and so on. So in Hebrew, the word garti is spelled gimel, resh, taf, yud. Gimel is the numerical equivalent of the number 3, Resh is 200, Tuf is 400, and Yud is 10. So when he says Garti im Lavan, or im Lavan Garti, I lived with Lavan, it adds up to the number 613. There are also 613 commandments in the Hebrew Bible. And so when he says, I lived with Lavan, what he's insinuating is that even though he lived with an evil person, a corrupt person, that he was still in his essence keeping the commandments of the Bible. He maintained his righteousness. And this is a very lofty ideal because it is very easy to become influenced by your environment. And the fact that he was not negatively influenced or pulled down by the corruption of his uncle speaks very highly of him. But he says it kind of in an insinuation. He's not boasting. Because it could have said, instead of im lavan garti, he could have said, im lavan shachanti, I dwelled with lavan. Or um, im lavan haiti, I was with lavan. Or some other word. But it says, it uses the word garti to teach us that lesson. 
another one of the lessons from this week's Bible portion is teaching us that to learn from people who do evil, to have that much enthusiasm to do good deeds. We can see today that terrorists are committing atrocious acts with such enthusiasm. They're like so excited to kill other people and even willing to sacrifice their own lives because they think that they're going to be rewarded for that. And they kill with such enthusiasm. What we should learn from them is the enthusiasm, but flip it and switch it that we should run and we should have that much enthusiasm to do acts of loving kindness, to do good deeds. This is what we need to learn from evil people, people like Lavan, people like Asab, who murder, kill, you know, rape, and do all kinds of horrible things with such vitality and lust, and they're so driven to do these things. We should be that driven to be, to be doing good things. Um, there also teaches us about what it what is real power personal power and and it is having power over oneself controlling one's own self another lesson that i want to share is um it says veotel yakov levado that um jacob remained alone so what happened was that he sent his wife and child his wives and children ahead they were leaving their home with lavan and he and going to the promised land and he stayed behind because he was expecting this possible battle with his brother. And so he was alone. And so it talks about being alone being a positive trait. And that this was what helped Jacob to be victorious over his brother. Another one of the passages from this week's Bible portion is, Vayomer Esav yeshli rav, and Esav said, I have a lot. Vayomer Yaakov and Jacob said, I have everything. So an evil person is a greedy person. A, gre a greedy person says, I have a lot, but I could have more. They want more and more and more, and they're never satisfied with what they have. A righteous person, however, says, I have everything. They're content with what is theirs, and they don't feel like they need you know, to acquire more possessions or anything else in order to be happy. They're happy with what they have. And the last thing that I wanted to share, that so today's lessons came from Growth Through Torah by Zelig Pliskin. And the last thing that I want to share comes from a book called Women at the Crossroads by Rebbe Tzinchana Bracha Stigobam. And in here, it talks about the story of Dina. Dina was Jacob's daughter, and she was raped by a person from Shechem. And... And from her daughter that was born out of that rape, Osnat, it was established that the Jewish heritage follows the mother. That it doesn't matter if the father is not Jewish, if, as long as the mother is Jewish, that the child is Jewish. Dina's name consists of the letters DNA plus the letter He for Hashem, which represents God. So Dina represents the DNA of God. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share. Shabbat Shalom and may God Almighty bless you in everything that you do. Bye-bye.